Shit. It's morning already. I hate this. Ugh, I have to go work out again. I don't want to go to the gym. I'm so tired of running. I'm so sick of this routine. How come she looks so good and I still look like this? I hate my body. You have to work out, Linda. Just get it over with. Come on, Linda. Don't stop. Or you know you're just gonna gain it all back. Don't be lazy. Don't be weak. Exercise harder, work out longer, run more, eat less, burn more, be stronger than this. It'll be worth it. No pain, no gain, right? So, you guys know I like to work out, and I guess you're right because I exercise for 365 days. No rest days, and some days I even worked out two times a day. No matter how busy, no matter how sore, no matter what exam assignment or deadline I had, I didn't miss a single workout. Some might think I'm crazy, addicted, stupid, unhealthy, but honestly, I've never felt better, more confident, or prouder of my body in my entire life. Do I recommend it? No. Did it change my life for the better? Yes. Would I do anything differently? Definitely. To rewind a little for some context, exercise and me, well, we've had our ups and downs. I've had a mixed on and off, sometimes toxic, sometimes freeing relationship with exercise throughout my life. In the past nine years since I began to work out, there have been obsessive gym sessions, overtraining for hours on empty stomach, days and months and years where I didn't exercise for the right reasons. Hundreds of hours of working out to burn the calories, undo my guilt, punish myself for eating and punish my body for looking like it did. But over the years, I've been learning to find the balance between pushing my body and respecting my body. This year, I think I discovered the beauty of exercise, the mental strength it can build, the journey it can take you on, and the empowerment it can provide. This year, I really learned that you can learn to love something that was destroying you for so long, and you learn to see it in a different way. You can't hate your body into getting fit. You shouldn't hate your body into the gym. You shouldn't hate your body into going on a diet. You shouldn't hate your body into losing weight. None of these things are wrong, but it all starts with loving your body first. And that is what I was missing all these years. I didn't go into 2020 being like, I'm gonna exercise every day, like I have to do this, this is my resolution, I'm gonna get so fit. It was more like, it just happened. To be honest, I think being stuck in front of a computer for 20 hours a day played a huge part in it. My body was literally begging to sweat. So I started by just doing Instagram workouts, bodyweight workouts, and started to become the most exciting part of my day during quarantine, other than, you know, eating, of course. And over time, my body just began to learn to love the strength it gained, the feeling of working on myself, and the feeling of growth. While a lot of people say they get addicted to the physical results, for me, it wasn't the physical changes, but the changes up here that truly amazed me. This year was the first year where I didn't work out to change my body or lose weight or look a certain way. I just did it for me, for fun, for my sanity, and I just didn't stop. Exercise addiction is not a term that I or anyone should throw around lightly because it's serious. It can be life-threatening, and while it's not officially recognized as a mental health disorder, that doesn't change the fact that it's real. Phenomenal. It's so good. I've got a ton of comments from people saying they think I have an exercise addiction. And because health is something that's so subjective and defined differently by every person, I don't blame people that show concern. So, do I have an exercise addiction? No. How do I know? Because I used to. I know what addiction feels like, and I know what loving the feeling of working on taking care of my body feels like. Two very different feelings, by the way. Addiction for me felt like the only safe place was exhaustion. Like, without working out for a day, I would go crazy. I would be so anxious and stressed and fidget all day. Like, I literally would cry if my YouTube workout video wasn't loading. Like, I would lose my shit. I would try to fit an exercise wherever I went because I felt bad for sitting. In the line of the library, I would start doing tuck jumps. In the kitchen, I would do 20 burpees. In the middle of class, I would start doing high knees. The plateau that every fitness influencer warns us about scared the shit out of me. <laughs> I thought I had to continue to keep adding time to my workouts until I was literally working out three times a day, fitting as many workouts in as possible and calling it health. I would hate every minute of it. And my sole motivation was to burn calories, prevent weight gain, to allow myself to eat. And the idea of working out as something fun or therapeutic never even crossed my mind. How could people want to torture their body? like that, I thought. I just couldn't understand it. People in today's society see and promote working out in such an unhealthy and forceful and toxic way, like these quotes are disgusting. Like no. When I wanted to stop during my workout, I would replay Blogilotti's words in my mind and she would be like, you're not gonna get your summer body if you stop. Think of that flat stomach, think of those toned legs. It's all in your head, don't stop. And that's the problem. Young viewers are impressionable. I hadn't learned about this stuff in school. I didn't know where to find the right resources to learn at that age. And after I did get educated, not by fitness influencers by the way, I learned you don't have to push your body in your mind to a point of exhaustion every day to grow to change, to learn, to be healthy. It's not always about embracing pain and pushing yourself so hard. Sometimes we actually have to embrace who we are first, to slow down, take a break, and that's growth as well. Guys, we don't just wake up one day and decide to hate our bodies. We don't just choose to be self-conscious or think that we have to work out and starve ourselves to be beautiful. 
It's because as a society we've taught people to hate their bodies, so I had to spend years trying to unlearn that. I thought I would always be stuck and hate working out and hate my body, and that's why I'm here. You don't have to be stuck. First, for my personal journey, I need to get professional help, and then rest, and then force and allow myself to do easier workouts, fewer workouts, and have rest days, and slowly let my body and my mind heal that way. It's not easy to change your mindset or your habits, but it's not impossible. So, now I want to tell you guys everything that I learned after these 365 days. Oh, for me, physical motive is not sustainable. And the thing is, I can say this to you as many times and ingrain it into your mind and you still won't see it my way until you want to change your mindset. I didn't grasp this until I really started to appreciate and love my body and my life and I began to do it for health. I had to value myself as more than my body. You see, I began to realize that changing my body won't change my worth. It, it may work for you, but it didn't work for me. I worked out for a body, not for me or my body. Are you a dog or a bunny? Yes, you're so cute. Now, I work out because I love what my body does for me. I had to start seeing how lucky I am to have a body, a functioning one that takes care of me, one that works with me, so I should probably stop working against it. If physical change is the only thing you're focused on, you kind of miss out on all the other amazing things that working out can give you. I had to separate my appearance from exercise. Being the best version of you doesn't mean being a smaller, bigger, curvier version of you. <laughs> Don't think you have to do what everyone else is doing to get your results. I thought I had to like hip thrust 6 million pounds and do those hill sprints and those weird rope things that everyone does that makes them look really scary and aggressive and I actually really want to try it but I would probably just look really dumb if I did it. Anyways, don't be afraid to try new workouts, new forms of exercise. Everyone's definition of exercise is different. And in this case, there's absolutely no risk to trying something new. I used to be like, I'm only doing Lily Savory's workouts for the rest of my life. And yeah, I probably will be doing Lily's workouts forever. But I gave some other YouTubers a shot and I'm obsessed with their workouts too. For me, it just keeps it exciting and sustainable. Instead of 365 days of building my Lily obsession, I can, you know, spread the obsession. This is left. This is right. Just sit this down. Okay. Right now it's here. Because, okay. okay? <laughs> What's left? What's left? Another day, another bowl of oats. I learned to stop measuring the intensity or effectiveness of a workout by the length. For me, I used to think that I had to spend hours and hours in the gym to even call it a workout, and that's what led to all of my burnouts. When quarantine started, I was like, shit, my muscle's going to fall off my body. But honestly, after years of going to the gym, I've never felt fitter. I don't need a two-hour workout to feel a good burn or the heaviest weights to see growth, a few dumbbells, booty bands, and a good Caroline Gerber workout. You can be just as killed and sweaty in 20 minutes than in two hours. Well, <laughs> booty bands are my new best friend. When I started using booty bands, I don't want to be like, oh, my butt is huge now. No, it's still quite tiny, but I see a difference in the strength and the muscle, and you know, it's still a little bit more plump. Yeah, seriously, a booty band and a good butt and leg focused YouTube video, and your butt will die. It will, just trust me. Booty bands are absolutely life changing. I look bald. Very slowly today. Oh, what? Oh. It's hard not to compare my results with millions of other results of girls doing Chloe Ting Summer Shred. It's hard not to be disappointed with my results. But like, we are simply just different human beings and there's so many factors that affect how our bodies look. Even if I live my life exactly like Chloe or Pamela or Mad Fit or anyone else, I'm unfortunately not going to look like them. But that's okay because I need to be proud of what my body can do for me, not what it can look like for others, you know? And results can't solely be measured by what your body looks like, but instead by all of these other things. Like working out used to be the stressor and now it's my de-stressor. Yes, it took years failing too many mistakes mistreating my body, but health is a daily practice, not a 30-day practice. For me, one of the proudest moments is when you realize two weeks ago, two months ago, two years ago, you couldn't do what your body and your mind can do now. So, be patient with yourself. Uh, no. <sighs> okay. Uh, two, one. Uh, uh, holy frick. Huh? Oh, no. Oh, uh, no. What the fuck, bro? Are you fucking kidding me right now? Oh. Good morning! 
you have to eat. This is why working out always made me feel weaker instead of stronger. Years ago, I remember working out so hard without enough food in my body and I would literally have moments where the whole room would just spin and go black and it's scary, but I thought it was worth it back then. That's also why it didn't last. I need to fuel my body for my workouts, for my life. If I don't, I don't have enough energy. I'm not gonna enjoy my workout, do it properly. I'm not gonna feel strong. I'm not gonna get the benefits. Food is a lot of things, like amazing, delicious, beautiful, greasy, fresh, but it's also fuel. It's also not always about the perfect pre-workout. It's about eating enough and nourishing my body throughout the day to have enough energy. Calories and food and carbs, and for me, ice cream, are not earned. They're required. It's like if Milo were a food, this would be him. Mm. That's amazing. I the Ivy of the Xandar joke. For you. It's all like cases. How do you feel about your decision? I don't know what my decision is. There's no right or wrong answer. I'm always wrong, even if there's no right or wrong answer. Tell me why. Bang! 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 No! Bang! 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 Oh, yeah! You can't outwork a bad diet. I freaking hate this saying. I hate it because I hate it when people call diets bad. I mean, there's balanced and unbalanced, but this makes working out seem like something to undo my food instead of something to enhance my life. First, I learned what food you eat to fuel your workouts plays a huge role in how you feel during the workout, after the workout, how your muscles recover. Like most people say, before a workout, you want a snack with carbs and a little protein to make sure you have enough glycogen stores for energy and protein for protein synthesis. Basically, yeah, good nutrition can help your body perform better and recover faster. <laughs> but part two is something we all know. Diets play a huge role in how your body's gonna look. If you watch me, I don't eat what this culture defines as healthy, you know what I mean? That's why my body hasn't really changed drastically to Klebe's at this point in my life. I like my pints of ice cream and my donuts and chips and my focus isn't on changing my body. I think it's important to know that it's so normal and okay and perfectly fine to not eat perfectly. But my issues are I don't want to bring you down I just want to be free yeah. from the free And feel love for the first time I just want to love something about Protein, 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 protein. This is funny because it all started when I was talking about how my butt wouldn't grow in my earlier videos and one of you guys were like, maybe it's because you don't eat enough protein. And again, I'm not saying I'm the biggest plumpest butt, okay? But after I focused on getting a little bit more protein, I do see a difference. My butt just feels like a stronger butt. <laughs> protein is the building block of your muscles. So eating enough protein helps you maintain your muscle mass and promotes muscle growth when you do strength training. That's why I'm always eating my Greek yogurt bowls and also chickpea pasta is a beautiful creation. Protein hey, pancakes, Christine. protein oats, my favorite protein powder. And you guys already saw this coming. Built bar. 19 grams of freaking protein. Like, there's no simpler, more delicious, and chocolatey way to boost your protein intake. Like, I've tried a ton of protein bars. Like, a ton. And this makes every other protein bar look like imposters. Like, this is absolutely my favorite pre workout snack, post workout snack, during my workout snack. Built bars glowing. And literally every day, I just look forward to the moment where I can devour my built bar. I'm not even kidding when I say I crave these bars. Mm. <laughs> so, as always, the link will be in my description for 20% <laughs> off your purchase. Thank you, Built Bar, for partnering with me for this video. I literally love you so, so much. <laughs> okay, if I were to step on the scale a year before and see this number, I would cry, hate myself, restrict, plan a whole month to reset my diet, do so much cardio, and did I already say I would hate myself? Yeah. But I'm in a place in my life where I'm so proud of what my body can do and so proud that I get to take care of it. Like instead of asking myself, how can I lose weight? I try to ask myself, how can I take care of my body today? I have to repeat to myself all the time that being smaller does not mean better, prettier, or worthier. Is it for your overall health? Is it because you have a desk job and want to get moving? Is it for the feeling, the confidence, weight? Because there's a cute instructor. There's no wrong answer. There's no bad answer. It's just the way you approach it. Before, I'd go through periods of non-stop gym, 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 gym every single day, and then six months of just like refusing to go talk or think about working out because I didn't have a good enough purpose. You want your purpose to last your entire life because that's what your fitness journey is. It's like a lifetime journey. Wanting to change is okay and good. You're allowed to hope for what's to come while making the most of where you are now. Okay, there are good excuses for not working out, but time, I don't think is one of them. I've gotten so many comments like, you don't know what it's like to work a real job or be a mom and sleep three hours and get home and be exhausted, okay? Very true, but 
everyone is busy to some extent. I get it, life's busy and stressful and sometimes working out is the least of your worries, but you also have to stop making excuses for yourself, as aggressive as that sounds. Like, if you want to work out, you can make the time to work out 15 minutes a day. Wake up 15 minutes early and do a YouTube video, five minutes a day to do a little workout. That's 35 minutes in a week of 168 hours, which means you literally have 10,080 minutes in a week to find 35 minutes to work out. But of course, it's not for everyone. And sometimes you have to prioritize your sleep and school and life over exercise, and that's taking care of your health too. Working out for me is not like a to-do list thing anymore. It's part of my daily routine. It's part of my lifestyle. Like, I don't make time to work out, just like I don't make time to go to the bathroom or eat breakfast or brush my teeth. It's just time in the day that I've already allotted to working out, and the rest of my to-do list works around my lifestyle and my health. You know what I mean? No. Finally, as controversial as this one is, I learned that no one will like you more if you weigh less. Five pounds, 10 pounds, no one cares. No one knows those numbers except you. You can't work out for other people for other people to notice because most likely they're not going to notice. Even if they do, they may not say anything to you. Those numbers are not going to impact their lives. You have to work out for you because you deserve it. To be healthy, to be strong, to be confident in your body. I truly believe that losing weight can totally help you be more confident, but it doesn't cure a negative body image if you don't already appreciate your body. Too much of a good thing can be a bad thing. I would not recommend anyone to work out for a year without rest days, and I personally don't believe it's good for anyone's body, but not every day for me would have been super high intensity. Like some days I would do a simple Pilates workout or a 15 minute ab workout, but still, too much of a good thing can be a bad thing. I also admit, I overworked my body some days. I love working out and I'm also super competitive with myself and I get a little over ambitious and playing like two hours of Caroline Gervin workouts and my body just can't. But for me, it takes experimenting and time and pushing my body beyond its limits to be able to really find my limits and listen to my body. I'm being very scary. Pete on the ground. I should have worked out different muscle groups. I love HIIT and I love working out my lower body, so I rarely did anything else. But like, it's recommended to have at least a day or two in between working out the same body parts. Didn't happen, but should have happened. Rest days are so important. There were days where I knew my body was tired and I could use a rest day, but I knew how good I would feel afterwards. And I just didn't want to miss out on having that time of the day to sweat. But now I see those days, I should have just done nothing. I could have gone for a walk, did some chores or some cooking instead. Those days, I wasn't listening to my body. That was more listening to my head. And starting in 2021, I have taken one to two rest days every week and I feel fine. I feel great. I don't feel guilty. I don't feel a compulsive need to do burpees every 20 minutes. And that is a good feeling. So while I don't have shredded abs, I have come so far over these 365 days to witness my growth and see how my mindset can change and that I'm always growing and learning and messing up in life. That's what made these 365 days worth it. Every body and every person is different, but exercise shouldn't be your whole life. Like in this day and age, the fitness industry gives us so many mixed messages about fitness and food and nutrition. We listen to everyone, every platform, every influencer, every nutritionist, when really we have to learn how to listen to our bodies first. So in the end, healthy and happy looks different to everyone. So just be kind to yourself, your body and your mind because that's what you deserve. You deserve to enjoy food. You deserve to enjoy exercise. You deserve to have a life that's not revolved around those two things. And remember, I am so freaking proud of you.